John C. Smith Sr. is a product of Detroit. First of all, I'm a father, husband, and uh, a person that is here to bring the solutions and not cause problems. Tell the audience what being a father means to you. Oh man, it's, uh, what being a father means to me is a uh, it's about the most important thing I've ever done so far in my life to a point where uh, like the first seven years of my life I saw everything but the wind and pretty much been every place but electric chair. So by the time I was seven I was programming what kind of father I would be, what kind of husband I would be, and pretty, pretty much what kind of citizen. So in life it takes courage to raise a family. What three things influence your decisions in your career, in your home, and in your personal growth? Well, the, the most important thing as far as uh, being a father is the uh, essence of love. Without that love, you won't be able to do nothing. And with love, anything is possible. It's like, uh, as far as what I believe in, God Almighty. Anything is possible with God Almighty. Without Him, uh, nothing won't exist. What made uh, my career choice, uh, I used to hang out with my grandfather. I was the first grandson in the clan. We used to go to this uh, post office. It used to be uh, right between Grand River and I think it's... Uh, Living noise, right, right where, where the freeway sits right now. It used to be a mural of a lot of cats working on the assembly line. And that's what my grandfather did. He was, uh, he worked at Cadillac. He hired there in 1943. He was the first black man in the tent smith shop. And he retired in 73. He also was blessed to get his pension for like 33 years. So I would see that mural up there when I go in the post office. I say, Granddad, uh, that's what I want to do. That's what you do? He said, yeah, that's what I do. So I want to be an auto worker. So. I was blessed in there to get in when I was in high school. I got my 90 days in. I went to the Marine Corps for uh, four years, and my seniority went on. Came back, got out in December of 78, 79, January, I was back on the line. And I've been blessed to be retired for like the last 18 years. So, in life, what has been the most difficult moment for you to have to cope with? Whew. Uh, 99. I lost my oldest son the day after Thanksgiving. It was stupid why he left here. But uh, we had, at least we had closure to it, though, because uh, the guy that perpetrated the crime, uh, he was caught in like two days. But that's the worst thing in the world, to lose, lose a child. And what has been your biggest fear of raising children in Detroit? Well, yeah, after losing my first son, uh, you can't have any fear. You say your prayer and you got to let them go. Because you cannot control nothing out here. You do the best you can, and it's all by the grace of God that we make it through this mess. And what would you like to leave on this earth as a lasting impression? As a lasting impression, I would like to leave uh, my legacy of being a, a parent uh, and expressing love to a point where if my sons take the same steps I did as far as raising them and apply it and take it to the next level, I think they'll be good fathers and they'll be able to make good sons. Okay. And what message have you left in your community that you live in? Well, the message I leave in the community is uh, I'm a good neighbor. Uh, if I got a piece of bread, you can get half a piece of bread if you're hungry. If I'm able to help you in any kind of way, I'll help you. And uh, I'm here not to start no mess, but I'm here to bring the peace and keep the peace. Um, and what does the word hope mean to you? Hope is the word they push on us black folk. That's all we ever seem to have. Hope. No matter what we do, uh, we did, uh, we did uh, all the labor for so many hundred years for free. Made the country wealthy. We, we, we're born with this, we, we, we as black men are born with this raginess from I don't know where it comes from. But we have to learn and control it our whole life. We have to listen to the history. Then we experience the history. So we constantly adjusting and adapting, no matter where we go. Whether it seemed to me, being, as being a black, whether I've been Buddhist, Muslim, Christian, I still get that same disrespect in a lot of areas. And then they wonder why we constantly complaining. So I made adjustments. I stopped complaining out openly, and I try to make adjustments in my own life and do the best I can to make it through this mess. Now, although I said mess, uh, I say it because of all the negativity out here, you know, but uh, I can't control that. 
So I got to continue to adapt and adjust in certain areas of my life, in certain places I go. It seems like no matter how much money we get, we still consider a nigga in America. Just like when Obama got to the White House, they didn't say it's a black man in the White House, they said it's a nigga in the White House. Until we get past this ignorance to a point where I don't know what else we have to do. Uh, we fought the wars, we came back from the wars, we still niggas. During the time we're in wars, we, we love our country, you know, because we, we live in Daphne. That's why we're going to the military. But what else do we have to do to prove our point, you know? I don't know. Maybe when they go to the next planet and see us black folk up there already, they'll turn around and come back and straighten this mess out. And lastly, what keeps you hopeful that Detroit will become a better place for your grandchildren to grow up? Again, that hope, that belief we have, our faith. That's all we can, can uh, that's all we can look forward to, I think, because we can't see uh, 20 years from now. We live one day at a time. That's all we can do. So you make your plans. And uh, I say my prayers in the morning. And as my wife go to work, I say the prayers with her every day. We pray together every day. We study. And we uh, continue to hope and pray in our faith. That's the biggest thing we got is faith. Because without that faith, without that connection to the master of the universe, you will not make it through this master. And that's what I believe myself. So you got to believe in that or something greater than yourself. That's one of the first parts of being a man. To love something more than yourself. That's part of manhood. You grow up and you become responsible and you love something more than just your own wants and needs. That's the first part of becoming a man and mature. See, a lot of us get older chronologically, but we don't mature. But a lot of times when you get to, say, I was blessed. I got my soulmate. If I die, I come back. I look for her again. I wouldn't trade her in for Beyonce. I want to thank you for this time, your time this morning, and I also want to thank you for being a part. All right, appreciate it.